Everybody and welcome to the Refresh Point. My name is Ben, and as always, I'm joined by my constant co-host, current Y Schwartz English World Champion, Steve. Steve, how is it going? You know what? We're having a good week. Uh, we're almost <clears throat> to my favorite part of the Y Schwartz season. It's time to play. It's, it's time to, to play to regionals. Play. <laughs> and also, as you've just heard, we have the current Y Schwartz English uh, first runner of at worlds billy hello billy how's it going good how about you uh you know it's a busy time in life <laughs> i'm not going to lie the uh the most important thing in my head right now is uh i just watched pokemon worlds uh -huh. and i don't know which is worse being called uh first runner up or the number two trainer. <laughs> the number two trainer. That's right. Because we were, I was watching Pokemon World, and yeah, yeah. there are three prize cards. It says the number one world train, or the number one trainer. Yeah. The number two, the trainer, number two trainer, and then the number three and trainer. And the number three trainer. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know which is worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the first runner up is a title that you have and that you can flex at every event and every opportunity. It's, it's beautiful. People will see the one and they'll be like, oh, you got first. Runner that up. Classy though. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to correct them every time. It's like, no, just, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just smiling through the pain. You're number one uh, in our hearts. Yeah. Smile with the mask on. Whatever, whatever that meme was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we do have Billy on the podcast today to help us discuss, to get ready, get, get hype, get pumped for the BCS 24-25 competitive season. Uh, Steve, uh, now that he's on the couch, you will have to defend yourself against his request for a review cheating deck. Uh, you're gonna have to debrief him a little bit. He's here, you're obligated to, he's right here. You've played the deck and and you're, you're obligated to tell him how that went, you know? And so and so we'll do that. And we'll, and we'll have our, you know, a good old Position zero center stage with our guest, Billy Doe. So, shuffle your decks, tap or cut. We'll get right into the refresh point with some breaking news. It's fucking Oshinoko! It came out! Yeah! Yay! <laughs> yeah, now we have yet another set that is going to have a uh, very, we'll call it, L linear play patterns where we don't have to think too much about what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the one combo, then we're gonna do the two combo, and then we're gonna do the three combo. Woo! Easy! Yeah! yeah. We love, we love that. that! Dude, level two boards are in vogue right now, you it's know? Like, it's like, it's huge too, right? It's like 13k on swing? No, 11. It's like 11? 11k on swing. Good enough for me. Look, it gets plus... The Brainstormer says give plus soul. It's good enough for me. Plus 1k and 1 soul. Well, it's both? Yeah, there you go. There you go. See? It's both? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we're going to get uh, two interesting decks out of Oshinoko. One very much meta. The other very much just funny. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just funny. What is it? The, 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 the pants one? I there's believe like a, there is a there's a memory the deck. twins memory deck and yeah, then yeah. there's the yellow deck which is a we choice Kana, yeah, we yeah. have three different types of choices this will be very similar to several other decks that have existed in the course of YS where I think it's literally the climax swapper for choice is just on play swap your choice from deck to hand or sorry yeah. from waiting room to hand as long yeah. as there are choices yeah. as long as there's a choice, choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah excellent yeah. excellent just free yeah also we have a 3-0 event that says search for a climax yeah. You know, great stuff all around. You prefer not to use it in that way, but it can. It does can? It, does it do something else? Correct. If, yeah, it can, it's, have, it's the prize card If right you now. stack them the in memory, you can discard them to burn your opponent. Oh. I think you're thinking of Uma. No. That's exactly what Uma does, yeah. Oh, okay. So the Oshinoka one is, um, it gives... Oh, it gives him pay... It gives a character, like, uh, pay ditch burn. Yeah. Um, I think it's, like, burn three for some, like, unspecified expensive amount, but mm -hmm. you can give that. Um, I think it actually also says salvage. There's three modes, and okay. I don't have them all pulled up right now, because this was kind of just a quick little breaking news segment. And so, I don't remember, because... I haven't been playing against it that much, so my bad. I do know that it searches climaxes. I do know that it gives burn to a character for a cost and effect, and there's a third mode. Boom. Yeah, so you could either search for a climax in your deck, 
you can give a character 4,000 power and then send it to stock or pay for burn oh, three. Oh, it goes to stock, okay. Mm -hmm. Pay four on attack burn three. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I've played against the deck and I, I've seen the stock effect. We just haven't had the opportunity to do the burn four hasn't come up or burn. Yeah, burn three. Burn three. Yeah, pay four, burn three. You know, that's a lot of stock. That is, that is all a lot that's of That's an extensive amount of stock. So, it's okay. makes if your sense. opponent just cancels, you just stock more. Yeah. Complete tangent. Uh, my cousin from Munich was recently by, and we spent a whole week just eating food. Great amounts of food. Y'all were there for one of them too. Steve was there for two of them. Yeah. It was uh, a great time. Yeah, I think it's nice to get that kind of perspective about, um, you know, the difference in culture and cuisine. It was good. I had a good time. I think it was, it was actually highly interesting for him to kind of experience different food cultures and be like, damn. You guys got it like that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> food, food, food is good. Food's a great time. We love barbecue. <laughs> we, we love, love uh, we love good burgers. We love being in DFW where we have a large Asian population. Yeah, a lot we of love good, food. good. You know, we love good Viet. Good yeah, Korean, so it, good. and we're we're gonna get to we're gonna get to host another Weiss out of towner pretty soon. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Someone comes over on this Saturday. Literally tomorrow. tomorrow so yeah. thank you for visiting from Ohio, Lindsay. You yeah. did it last week. It was a great time. We played a lot of Weiss. Yeah, so good we'll, stuff. Yeah, so and obviously we got her to sample some of our, you know, uh, local food culture, and it was yeah, great. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, let's see. So we're going to Primal tomorrow. So my guess is like there's like a good Viet place near there. I mean, we should definitely do downtown Fort Worth. Downtown Fort Worth. We can do like Rodeo Goat. Yeah. 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 Now there's it. Nah. <laughs> Rodeo Goat's fine. But okay. Like... Okay. Okay. Well, oh wait, no, no, no. Big cats. Big cats. Are they open? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Have you, have you hit? Have you hit Panther Island yet, Ben? Yeah. We could do yeah. Panther City. Yeah. We could do Panther oh, City. Panther City Barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we I was could thinking do about pa the Panther Island pav Pavilion. Mm. Uh, yeah. We could do Panther City. Any one of these things happened last week it was great we had a great time <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing it was real good um shop challenges they're happening right now yeah so uh if you have desires of reducing the randomness of this game and keeping yourself from killing it from dying really early in the tournament then you too can win a local shop challenge and get yourself a free buy yeah one you round buy applicable to any regional for one round stay out of the jungle keep yourself safe for at least one round for at the very least one round the most important of all rounds the first round yeah. where everyone's equal <laughs> for a brief moment until we're not the variance you'll fight the randomest things uh-huh uh and so yeah um there were, oh th so this this just happened they updated the fact to say that if you get a sponsored invite, they would no longer reimburse you for like different flights or accommodations. That if you got a sponsored invite, you would have two weeks and you would be like, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go this, 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 and accept this, this, this. And then they will do all the booking. And then that will be how it goes. Wait, you, so what do you tell them? So like you you tell them I'm gonna be there like this this day to this day, right? Okay. And then they're gonna be like, all right, we will book the flights and we will book the accommodations. Now I would guess that they would only book the accommodations for like the tournament days. I assume. And then let you like pay for the rest of the days. Yeah. But previously there had been instances where people would like book, you know, their flights like separately right and uh, like different accommodations separately right and that would get reimbursed that is no longer a thing well that's really unfortunate for me in particular but <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that, that was specific to people receiving a sponsored invite at a regional because they would have like a two-week period to respond and like figure all that out now then for your invite i mean yeah i don't know i think that they'll probably do <laughs> the same thing um as long as the flights can be organized around a longer trip, then it doesn't matter. It, none of the flights will be great. They're all going to be what they're going to be. So 
it's fine. You do lose some flexibility there in the sense that Bushiro's going to be booking them. They probably won't book you on the greatest flights ever, but they'll at least be nonstop. Yeah, probably. And this is a lot of uh, real winner's privilege talk. We're just like, yeah, you know, it's kind of annoying that they changed the sponsored invite system from when we had it last this year. This will matter to literally only like a double handful of people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, there's like what? I mean, like in like like in NA, it like or sorry, in like the Americas region, I think there's like 12 regionals total because you're probably they're, 12 they're, yeah it's something like that yeah. between the na between us and canada and mexico so to like the dozen people in, in, in the Americas. Like, I think, I think for wise yeah, yeah. so there, i guess there like, was one country i remember where they're just not doing wise uh it, true uh because i think was, they were just doing just vanguard or something yeah, yeah costa, rica. costa rica and a couple others yeah i think uh puerto rico as well yeah uh chile is actually doing wise oh okay we did uh it. <laughs> i think it's in like I think it's unironically in January. Yeah, I looked that up for fun. I just, I was, I was curious. I wanted to know, but they also don't, I think they don't get a sponsored flight. I know that some of those smaller regions just don't, like they I just, know they stop the, doing it. Yeah, like the Asian, like the Southeast Asian region, for the most part, I think like Vietnam, Myanmar, and some others are not getting sponsored flights. I'm not sure if that applies to Australia. I think Australia might still have like the sponsor. I invite. feel like, yeah, I, I, I think they will. But you know, if there's any Aussies listening, you, you can correct us on like how sad the situation is or not. Uh, but yeah, just like little, little small updates. Um, is there any more? I don't know. Like, I don't really think that much happened. We got Oshinoko. It's here. Congratulations to us. We are in the middle of WGP season. We are in the middle of WGP season as well. So, you know, there's that there's that whole thing going on. The tournament is still I'm like I'm pretty sure it's still tentative, which is really annoying for the purposes of trying to plan on going to nationals, especially the last chance qualifier the day before. So you would have to plan if you wanted to go to the last chance qualifier, you'd have to plan to go the day before and the next day, which is really annoying to do when it's still to be determined looking at November 16, 17. Hey, they're looking. They're looking at a date. That's that's great. I, I they're mean, looking at it. They've let's... got it in their eye, their line of sight on the calendar. It looks, you know, they look at the calendar and it looks like November 16, 17. And then I just like, you know, I don't want to assume the worst will happen, but also like, let's come back in like a month where they shift it up like one way or the other. And they're like, nope, it's going to be, you know, like uh, this weekend instead conflicting with Duluth or conflicting with Houston BCS. Congratulations. <clears throat> that sounds terrible for some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like at least two thirds of this couch. <laughs> that's, that's true. Were you thinking about WGB, Billy? Uh, I'm thinking about it. As in, like, thinking, like, 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 this whole like, couch like, is like, I'm the one that's like, I'm gonna send it. I don't care, no matter what. Look, and look, like these think- two jokers over here, are like, <laughs> I mean, an invite's an invite. If we find an invite at the local shop, then look, I mean- look, me currently looking at WGP. Is like WGP still looking at the dates? We're still thinking about well, it. Yeah, you're looking at it. Yeah, We're currently right. just looking at it. <laughs> you're looking at it. You're looking at it. Exactly. 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 Oh, jeez. Uh, but yeah. Uh, great stuff. Great stuff all around. And now, Steve, you tried to make a review cheat list because Billy looked at review, and he looked at my shit, and he was like, "Fuck, he gets to cheat all the time. I want a full cheat deck." And so you attempted to make a full cheat deck. Now, how did that go? Not well. (laughs) Not well. It did not go well. It turns out part of what makes Y Schwartz decks good is synergy. And if you have none, 
And the whole deck starts to get really, uh, we'll call it clunky. <laughs> so um, I will put the deck code to the list I attempted to use in the YouTube description and in the description on Spotify. But suffice it to say, the standby, standby pants build sounded better than it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll elaborate. So, all right, we played right. a few test games with it, and generally the exact same thing happened in pretty much every game. I would put out a bunch of guys that, despite being a standby deck with characters that are presumably a level ahead of the other characters on the board, weirdly just die. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> and it, the level wasn't a particular consideration in the process. <laughs> they died at two. They died at three. They died all the way through. So, standby deck kind of needs the plussing characters that come from the standby trigger to stay on the board. They don't. Um, <laughs> the principal card that I wanted to leverage was the 2-1 Karen. Which yeah, for sure. Which is... Um, my favorite card in Revue Starlight, honestly. Yeah, we love cheating. Yeah. But it doesn't give power. It doesn't. It uh, gives power in a very weird way that does not matter. So. Yeah, especially because you're playing standby and, like, it specifically will never give power to any characters. I don't care about the offense power. Out. The offense power isn't the problem. All right, The okay. problem is the defense power where I'm staring at a counter. I'm like, hey, I got a 3K counter. Isn't that cool? And it's like, it would be, but that guy over there is 13-5 and um, you're dead. So Epic. you'll get a defensive scry here a couple of times. That's really good. And I'm glad you had to do that. But um, your old board's dead now and you have a four card hand. So, I mean, maybe figure that out. Yeah, Godspeed. So um, we're going to have to, yeah, we're going to have to reconsider uh, our strategy. Go back to the drawing board a little bit. I think the biggest thing is that Revue Starlight, because it's older and we'll just call it less good. Um doesn't have as many really great zero pluses but i need to lean more in towards the zero pluses so that my hand will stay more robust during the game i think yeah you did not put that many of them in your list no because i leaned in yeah i need to lean away a little yeah, for synergy yeah. for for the purpose of actually making a deck that works yeah yeah for sure um so i think i'm gonna yeah reconstruct it a little differently probably give up on the standby one combo because it doesn't plus enough um yeah and reconfigure it in some other way but uh, I don't give up uh, that easily, so we're gonna we're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep trying. You know that's you know that's real respectable. Yeah, it's what I do every single day. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not gonna give up on Maya though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great finisher. We yeah. love Maya. Yeah, yeah. Also, I ended up getting two recruits off of that Maya recruiter. That I, was pretty sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. Do you have do you have any notes for for your commission, Billy? You have anything that you would like? I too like this two one Karen. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, you know, speaking of which, look, you have Karen, you have Giraffe. If I know my triggers and I know my opponent's damage, like, I don't know, man, just slam a two soul. If you see three damage, it's three damage, right, Steve? <laughs> That, it's I, a great time. I tried. <laughs> like, <laughs> the semi deal no damage. <laughs> we need more pants. I think that's the trick. You ready to do pants? More, more stand by pants. More damage, yeah. Not, more, more 1K ones, somehow. Yeah. I don't you, know. Door pants. Door pants, 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 pants. We're going to figure it out. Okay. We'll, all right. Something, okay. something will happen. I believe in you, Steve. Well, I appreciate that. All right. All right. All right. So, speaking of which, let's hop into... Position zero, center stage. Well, wow. our guest on the show today, uh, Billy Doe, uh, which is, in a sense, kind of like a slightly fake guest in the sense of like, he's he's a friend of the podcast. We, uh, you know, we play games together all the time. We chat all the time. Realistically, you know, he helps us, you know, proofread our podcast audio for like different errors and stuff. Uh, but he's also still... Uh, at this time the second place player at the world championship that most recently happened so uh dallas overall and uh welcome billy yeah What's it, uh, up? it feels weird uh for some reason for once in a while uh being uh not the most highest ranked player in this room currently 
<laughs> yeah. So after Worlds, and even like when when the result happened, how did you feel? Um, honestly, it's weird. It's right. weird because it's like, okay, look, if y'all saw the game, that game was fucking scuffed. Am I allowed to swear? Am yeah, I, okay, yeah, you can cool. swear. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah that game swear. was fucking scuffed. It's a while that that game was actually even like semi real at some point. Right. Uh, but like, it's like, it's like, fuck it, dog. Like my first world, I got we we, we got second. We'll take it. And yeah, like, true. And I didn't lose to someone I didn't know. I lost to Steve. Like the 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 literal little guy who is like. I think I spent more hours at Steve than at any other locals the month before World. <laughs> uh, yeah, same. Because we were all at Steve's. A bunch. <laughs> uh, the three of us. Yeah. We, was... uh, we gave him perfect slime training. It was kind of cringe, actually. We, yeah. we kind of <laughs> played ourselves. Because he got to fight two slime players on rotation, and we just got to fight a slime player and then the Hollow Life player on rotation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I remember it was very funny when uh I was on stream for top four, I think. And then right. when when they're like, I was like, we finished our match in top four. And I was like, can I go go to the restroom or something real quick? They're like, nah, you can't. They're almost done. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then, and then like, I'm like, my back's to the wall. And so like, I'm just looking out into the area. And then the, they see, I see Steve start walking up and like, I just like get out of my chair, run over, hug him. And then like. Everyone who didn't know it was that me and Steve are from the same locals are like, damn, I guess y'all just really like each other, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true, though. True. It was funny because it came up during the actual official White Shorts commentary. Yeah, yeah. They, they're they like, wow, that's a really, that's a really uh, warm like, oh. handshake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they, like, uh, yeah, like, Ken didn't know. <laughs> so it was just, it was one of those things where, it was a weird circumstance, but it was nice. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it was really great. It was honestly it was, like it was fun. It was also, uh, we like we've like me and Steve had talked about it before already, obviously, but it was really funny to me in that I was like so empty for like just like that <laughs> hour and a half. I'm like like sulking outside, like getting like convenient food, being like, "Fuck!" I whiffed it. Walks back inside. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas? <laughs> Dallas Finals? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It so. was uh, it was a uh, Dallas Finals and then uh we had to make sure we uh had to teach those uh what was it? Those uh Quebec no uh, Canadians. The, the Canadians. It was uh, the Vancouver guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Hey guys, oh you got three. Congratulations. We only have two, but uh you know, we're first and second. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Uh so after the tournament in like the time since what have you been kind of doing with your time yes yeah uh yeah well, okay yeah, so yeah, like yeah. uh like how of... much wise do you feel like you've been playing like did you take you know did you take a break a little bit did you like pump the brakes on play a little bit i did pump the brakes just a little bit because uh because, because we did not for nothing we did go to spring fest and we yeah. got there we, we got which spring fest which is great um i will say i definitely toned back on weiss specifically just a little bit because I felt a little bad because the Pokemon locals were great and the people were really nice and then I just ignored them for like three months prepping for worlds. Yeah, yeah. So like I took a little break. I was like, okay. You know, you felt bad. I also felt bad and then I never went back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't want to make a new standard deck. Like, yeah, yeah, Because like it was, it was right with rotation. So it was yeah, really it's like weird. about to yeah. be rotation. And even then, like mm -hmm. when I was still in it, and like I'm sure you felt it as well. It's like every new set release is still like, okay, what's the new cards for my deck? True, you know? true, yeah. Like what's the next step? What's even mm -hmm. without rotation? It's just like every set release, just like, all right, new cards, let's new go. cards, let's go, let's go. I, I, I'm definitely, it's, I'm definitely feeling the Weiss where like we can just chill on one set for like a good couple months. <laughs> it's, it's a great time. Uh, if you didn't get me to go in with you on Macross Delta, and like Firin, I would not have purchased any more product like this year probably in general i think outside of ruby premium oh I, I got that too that's fair. outside of ruby premium i did not get a set like i think ruby premium was the first set i got this year like same yeah i think like was there anything else earlier you like, got you got chainsaw man 
I did get Chainsaw and Man. I, okay. I, I, uh, I forgot about Chainsaw Man. That's, I, I don't know Chainsaw how I forgot about Chainsaw well, Man. Well, because the did... honest answer was I freeloaded Chainsaw Man off of you because I didn't That's get true. It. You didn't take the deck for the entire spring season and I never played it. So to be that's, fair, it's that's like also every, true. Every spring season, I'm like, I could play what I want or I guess I'll just join this team and uh, I'll be that one guy playing that one solid deck and I'll yeah, let yeah. everyone else have their fun because I think like what... Two years ago, Steve had his fun with Hollow Live, and now this year you had your fun with uh, Revue Starlight, and then Pope was over here putting out ten instances of damage on Avatar. Uh, yeah, the Doctor really did just uh, carry both of our asses. Oh, he, like he definitely did. Because <laughs> in because like in Houston, I shit the bed hard, right? Mm -hmm. You're pretty good. Doctor's pretty good. And right? then like I had to take a two months. I had a work schedule change, so like. And then in Duluth, you yeah. shit the bed not as hard. Much much better than I did, but still like first two rounds were rough. Yeah, first two rounds were rough. We had we had to like re re acclimate ourselves because we like we played like five games of Weiss over like the last two months beforehand. Yeah, and then <laughs> I I picked up, and the doctor was still killing people with Avatar and getting that set banned alongside Carbon. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, great stuff. But now, it's time to go to regionals. So, how are you prepping right now? I am playing more slime. Playing more slime. Let's go. I'm looking at more SPs and I'm like, is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth it to get Brother. more SPs? Brother. Brother. If you're only going to have one more run. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, I don't advocate gambling. <laughs> I don't advocate it. We buy singles like a regular person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, those singles could be SPs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, I am like, looking playing at, uh, a lot of slime, mm -hmm. you know, there's the big kind of like, the, the one of the big meta discussions right now is what is the slime variant, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we have a bunch of people, West Coast, playing Door, Standby, like, we picked it up and, like, it's disseminated and people will play Standby the whole time. Uh, what is it? Uh, Hakase, uh, you know, brainstorm with Zabuton, and like they, I think they brought out probably one of the first eight pants slimes at Worlds specifically as well. Uh, and people are still kind of like iterating on that list, and uh, and the Milam kind of door as well is is still kind of like an ever present like, you know, it is really funny to to hit the back row. That's kind of funny. I, I've been playing a little bit of uh, the Door Milum deck on uh, on the simulator, and uh -huh. yeah, it's 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 nice being able to just have a bonder grab the guy, and you know, Door is always great. Um, I haven't really mattered about hitting the back row yet, but I just haven't played into those matchups because the sim people play random things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I think you also played for a time empty pants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when Steve went to that 2K, I, I tuned into the stream and I saw, I think it was some guy, I, I was pretty sure it was, because I, I'll be honest, I had it on in the background, but I saw some guy and, like, I saw four mirror pants and I saw him mill and I saw a bunch of random other pants and I'm like, is this guy playing empty pants? And I'm like, I thought about it and I'm like, because, like, I'm not the biggest fan of that level zero combo. Well, granted, I haven't played much with it, but it was like, that does take a lot of slots, especially for playing like three rules and everything. And it's like, I mean, you wouldn't play three rules with the pad zero combo. You don't? I don't okay, no, I don't remember. No, I don't know the exact look, looks of the sure, list. Sure, sure, but, uh, sure. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, the biggest annoyance is like just having not having like having the mirrors and uh, not having pants. So I was like, okay, but what if we do just play empty pants? And like, <laughs> you know, it wasn't the worst. It's okay. Like, like I haven't I haven't worked on it a lot, honest, if I'm being completely fair, but it's like sure, it's like the shitty fourth list that does exist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's there because it can happen, not because it should happen. We definitely spent some time last year trying to figure out what it wouldn't work with, and we kinda came up empty. We tried it with everything. Bjorn will work with anything. Even other level two combos. I think for a solid minute there, Ben played it with the Climax combo that removes your Climaxes from the game, and it still kind of worked. <laughs> no, I didn't play it with Muron. It no, was... Shizu. It, yeah. Or that's a, that's a Shizu. That's yeah, a Shizu yeah, yeah. So, one. like... Or, or, or not for nothing, the shell even leading up to Muron will kind of work fine, 
because like Miron is is the consistency engine, right? It like it gets you the finishers and you just set up Miron and everything's good. And so what the stock soul list says instead is I use the standby to stand by either the stock soul combo or Shuna. And then I get to, if you leave one reverse target, I will send your climax into memory and then unleash double Shion on your ass and pray heavily. I thought that was still scaffolded with Muron. Was it not? No. Oh, okay. It's just Remu standby into Stoxel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. This was my first. This was th your this first This was my commission. first, uh, yeah, commission. Honestly, it was pretty playable. Yeah. Cause As it, it turns out, if you look at me and you stay at level two for two turns and I draw two Stoxels, congratulations. You have two climaxes in memory. And when you hit me to three, and if you don't kill me, there is double Shion. And I don't care who you are, you better be really fucking compressed with the six remaining to live if two of them are in your fucking memory. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty ignorant. Oh yeah, I remember playing it with set two and I was like, when we were cracking set three, I was like, I wanna test this. How do we, how do we make this work? Honestly, what's the best way? And I'm like, oh, it's just hey, the same four. way. It's just yeah. the same way as before. And now we have a finisher, baby. Shion yeah. says, burn four, swing on either cancel, burn one, and then we get to do it twice. Yeah, I think my very first iteration of the deck was I had the set two version where it's just like it's just standby, and then it's that stock soul. And then when set three came out, I think I literally just slotted in three Shions, and I'm like, we'll figure the rest of out eventually. Turns well, out. Um, turns out that's like 80% of the way there. <laughs> yeah, it, it turns out that if you decompress your opponent to memory, it's a little difficult to uh, to deal with on average. Uh, I think, like, you did get to play into some of it, right, Steve? I think I played against it a couple times, and both times I faced it, it was a situation where... Uh, I would get two of my climaxes sent to memory, then I would trigger her and instantly die. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, uh, I don't know what to say uh, except you're dead. Yeah. Uh, yep, Keck. Yeah. So, yep. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, honestly. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What are the odds? What, what do you guys think are the odds? Oh, actually, no, because it, it loses to regular Mirad slime because yeah, you can't correct. get reverse it. Correct, correct. I was like, what you are can you stop now. <laughs> I, I mean, what do you think the odds are that it gets to a top eight? Or no. no, top cut, top cut. No. No? No. Just regular top cut. Why would you even? Why not? We just... Half of your matchups are against Mirin. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, Billy, I wanted to ask... Um, now that you're now that we're coming into the season do you think getting second at worlds changes your expectations for how the fall season will go uh honestly wait say that again <laughs> do you think that getting second at worlds has altered your expectations about the competitive season and your performance uh well i can definitely say it definitely has altered it in what way i don't know because it's like it's like there's two sides to it because it's like all right i got second there there's only there's only one spot higher there's only there's one only one spot to go. higher <laughs> yeah, so it's like we're true. chilling but also it's like but i could go higher at this point yeah yeah we could, exactly we could keep going so yeah it's like all right cool uh yeah because like it's like well steve steve doesn't have to worry about regionals right so it's like, well, now I'm, 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 I just be like, all right, well, now I got to go to these regionals and if we fail, we fail. And like, damn, we just leave a little chump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly, yeah. Uh, long, long time, uh, real ones on the podcast will remember that I have a pretty honestly similar mindset and that I'm like, we're going to go to all these regionals. And if we fucking whiff it, then it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> I, I will say, yeah, because uh, if I can be completely honest, last year uh, we got I got third in New York, but like before that, it was jo it was honestly the only top I had was that top eight in Chicago two years ago, mm -hmm. and so it was like go in, in that twenty twenty three season. It was a lot of like, damn, did we just get a fluke, or can we do well, or is and then it was like Worlds was like. 
okay, cool. We can we we have a chance to see how well we can do with like we would assume all good players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, like, and as it turns out, and it turns out we did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I think so. I think that um, yes, I I think that that's true for the most part. That the hardest part of the whole process is getting the invite. Mm-hmm. Once you're there. Anything could happen in seven games. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, it would be like what? No, it's six Swiss, so three. Yeah, yeah like nine. nine games. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm yeah. talking about just like once you get into the top, right? Oh at, yeah, at yeah. Worlds, sure, sure. A lot of it is just gonna be, are, are you him? Are you that guy? Right. Is it your day? Right. True. Because True. in best of one and in Y Schwartz, sometimes you're gonna need some good stuff to happen, and. Everybody there is going to be somebody who either finished top three at a regional or used to be world champion. So there's not going to be any taking rounds off, chilling, whatever. Nobody's going to be playing non-meta weird stuff. It's just going to be well. Okay, okay. Well. It, it's no one should. No one. No one should be free because they're a bad player. Yeah, nobody's going to be completely free. Dex. I feel like I, I think we could even look back at Weiss Tea Time. There were I feel like at least a a few decks that people were like, "All right, we got to Worlds. Let me crack out my favorite deck." Or you know, like the Match Rarity decks. Yeah, true. Like uh, certain uh, <laughs> people who uh, yeah. got uh, fourth. I'm sorry, uh, fourth from last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, per- <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> look, look, at least the cards are shiny. Is all I can say. <laughs> That's true. They were shiny. There they were, were there were, were some shiny. there were some non-meta decks like um, here's somebody eight, played eight. somebody played Sao. Oh, Darcy they I, did play Yuna. Yeah, Yuna at, I faced I faced yeah. a GG uh, GGST deck that was fairly unorthodox. Um, there's it. Yeah, yeah. Bromius played. Uh, yeah, you, TRV you, dual laners. TRV dual laners. Yeah, Bang Dream eight door cost me. So. Yeah, there there are always going to be a few, but in general, those are all real decks for the most part. Yeah, there's yeah, not sure, going to be sure, any sure. decks that are like, oh, this is some deck from forever ago or whatever, some random stuff. It's if if it's off meta, it's actually even more scary in some ways. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Kokarin again. You got top eight at Worlds with Adventure Time. Like, always got to remember that. What always. a what a always. homie. You know, Look, uh, one of the few other guys who was taking the chill picture with me. Yeah, yeah. In that top eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, you know, he he really did get me. Uh, in in the sense of like, he got there and I did it after I basically just like free executed him into Luth for like that <laughs> regional one. Like, it, like, cause it was just like, I didn't see you run the blue stock swap, and it's kind of like a hard tech card for you to run. So I'm going to go get 13 clean stock in deck one. And as it turns out, that wasn't enough. Uh, but also, yeah, he, he got one back on me because uh, can ran it back to uh, top eight at Worlds with the Adventure Time list. So got him. <laughs> um, and so you played other card games like Steve, unlike me. How has it felt going from previously Yu-Gi-Oh! and Vanguard now into Weiss. Uh, I will say it feels a lot better not playing Yu-Gi-Oh anymore because <laughs> I did utter jack shit in Yu-Gi-Oh. I think I got one regional top, maybe. Right. Maybe. Right. I did get Nats, but that's because I entered a four-man OTS where it was guaranteed top four got an invite to Nats. So so, so you signed up for a tournament that said you go to Nats? Yes, basically. Okay, got it, got it. Heard, <laughs> heard, 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 heard. Uh, Vanguard, I didn't play as competitively as much uh realistically that vanguard season was 20 was like the one i entered right before getting into weiss and so i played like two regionals of that and uh i don't know that meta wasn't great but it wasn't the worst but at the same time it was kind of just like can i count increments of five (laughs) like i i i like vanguard more than most people i think uh huh. But as a game, it's like I'm not the biggest fan anymore. <laughs> all right, all right. That's fair enough. So, what kind of draws you back into Weiss, like continuously? 
Because you have you have played some Pokemon, and you've you've enjoyed that at least a little bit, I would presume. I um, I like Weiss in that like. I think a friend Matt Gideon said it very well, where like in Yu Gi Oh, the the meaningful decision, the impactful decisions, all happen at the very first of the game. So like that's why the games are that's why like a lot of it is like the games are decided in the first few turns. While in Weiss, your impactful decisions are spread throughout the game. Like because it's like it's like we always have to remind ourselves. If you're out five climaxes at the start of the game, you're still not guaranteed to lose. Like, yes, you're going to have a rough game, but you can still win. Yeah, And yeah. so, like, I like the fact that, like, as long as, like, my hand has some kind of playability, uh, you can still probably pull something together because, like, that's probably a big reason of why I like Hololive, why I like Slime. Uh, like, I love those properties, but it's also, like, they have a lot of flexibility to them. If you look, a lot of my decks that I like to play just, like, are relatively flexible like they're also end up being strong yeah like yeah, chainsaw sure. man was fun i guess i did not <laughs> I, like it was it was fine it was like okay cool like i hate icy tails yeah 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 uh but like slime hollow live i'm trying to think of others right now i would not you started on bunny girl senpai i did start on bunny girl senpai kind of just because i was the only deck available that, that's fair enough yeah yeah like you basically went on to slime and hollow life kind of yeah like uh i i started uh i got bunny girl senpai january of 2019 2020 uh -huh. 2020 because that's when some of our locals went to worlds right and our the locals at the time you weren't there uh they were holding a watch party at like 2 a.m. And I hey. looked at one of the Weiss players being like, all right, it's official. I want to get into Weiss. <laughs> Sell me this deck. I want to either play Give me a deck, Sword Art, Love Live Sunshine, or Bunny Girl. You and got Bunny Girl. Yeah, because like Sword Art was a million dollars at that point still. <laughs> uh, Love Live yeah. Sunshine was like, you. no one had it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair and enough. so a guy looked at me. He's like, I got Bunny Girl. Here, you're in the game now. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Um, and so, I think that's pretty good. You know, we've had we've had your time in position zero, and now it's time to go to somewhere familiar, uh, somewhere that we go to every single episode, almost without fail. It is the hallmark of our podcast. It is the raison d'etre of why we play the game. It is the Spike Corner, baby. It's the motherfucking Spike Corner, and it's time to go to Sacramento. I love the Spike Corner. I love it. I will just want to admit that through my own fault, I honestly thought up until like maybe last month, it was the Spite Corner because the everyone was, salt, corner. was just salty. I just thought everyone was salty, uh, so it's just being spiteful as hell. The Spite <laughs> Corner. Yeah, welcome to the Spite Corner. We hate... All y'all that aren't listening anymore. Boom! That's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Only the real ones will laugh. Only the real ones will laugh. Shout out to all of the real ones. We do. We did get a lot of comments uh, on the YouTube video of people proclaiming that they were, in fact, some of the real ones. And to be honest, I double checked. I went into the comments and I responded to every real one that had said anything there. If you know, then you know we love the real ones. Somebody DM'd me just so that they could be counted as a real one in our hearts. We definitely count you. And we count you. We a counted all the real ones. Am I counted ones. because I listened to the raw? You <laughs> are counted because you listened to the entire raw audio before we edit it and I, I upload think full it honesty, every time. I, I actually only listened to the Spotify one, like... Maybe one in every five. Because <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, yeah. I listen to the raw. I guess I'll try to remember to give them a view. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 view. yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, you got too real there for a second. <laughs> take, take it easy. In right. any case, let's go to Sacramento. It's time to go back. Uh, I will be going this time. Uh, Steve went last time. The success rate was not amazing no charitably. i think that's a that's a great way to not terrible jesus i said charitably charitably okay charitably yeah, yeah. it was yeah. not amazing no i yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah very yeah. fair but um it, it's the friends who made along the way uh, as the kids say so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we're i'm gonna send an even better 
member of the refresh point <laughs> to kick you guys square in the ass. Oh, so anyway, I think I have more rounds necessarily. I, I think. yeah, absolutely. Because you played, did you play like seven or six Swiss? I believe there were six Swiss rounds. It's got to be at least seven. I swear to God, dude, it's a California tournament. Uh, it was uh, sub seventy. There were some complications, but that's fair. Uh, but also, this is like an actual BCS regional. Oh, this is gonna be huge. We got people coming in hot. Yeah, no, there'll be no excuses this time. It's gonna be either top thirty-two or top sixteen. Top sixteen sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, maybe that like low one hundreds number. Yeah, 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 pretty much. So how many do we need for top thirty-two? Uh, two fifty-four. Two fifty-four. Two fifty-four, I believe. So that that's or, gonna be Pasadena only. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably, probably, probably. It'll be, it'll uh, be but, everyone yeah. reaching for their very last chance of getting the worlds. Yeah, yeah, true, true. AKA this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. All right, so, so let's talk about the meta going into SAC. Let's talk SAC. about the meta going into SAC because it is a Californian tournament and all of the good Hendrickson players are in California. I think we can reasonably be confident that the top cut will have some of the Hendrickson players. If there's any justice in Weishwartz, it will be half Slime and half Hendrickson. <laughs> and both get banned before Houston. <laughs> yeah, they, I want the speed run. I need the, I need the any percent remove these decks from the game. <laughs> They can't keep getting away with it. They can't. What do you mean? Hendrickson's not even that good. The finisher sucks. It's burn fool. All it did was uh, something, something worlds. Anyway. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Hendrickson? No, it's these slime criminals. Oh, I need them okay, to okay. just remember that they got almost half the worlds and then even more wins. And somehow they keep getting away with it <laughs> not you not you guys you guys aren't the criminals you were there the whole time you were there before miran <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> look guys just 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 give me my two six back and i will be fine yeah, it's yeah. Just, I don't care what you do. You can you can play. I can right now. I can crack this fucking the gold label Shizu. I got graded because Copium it's never coming back. I can't play four. <laughs> I mean, you could just play Shizu right now. You just. Don't get to play Mirai. I still want to win, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, as a point of as a point of note, there because we think that there's it's a pretty SDS dense region near the top. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of so, the good players play SDS. So, do we think that? I, I, I asked this earlier, you know, before the podcast sometime last week, and I, I was kind of, Ben kind of poo-pooed me, and uh, I definitely want to get your feedback, Billy. Is Milam not just great in that matchup? Is the Milam combo not just great? I think, honestly, yes. Um, I think, I think, I feel like if, if there's going to be a lot of 7DS, I think maybe like at least half the slime list will be Milam. Right. Just on the pure fact that they have a better matchup because it's the one time that Hendrickson actually kind of cares about their opponent. Yeah, yeah, at least like a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, because like most of the time, it's like when I played Eskinor, it was like, ah, damn, I'm in a dad, bad deck state. Let me just brainstorm three different times, play this cowgirl once or <laughs> twice. Yeah. And yep. then uh, let me just uh, mill more and play this combo and get more stock yep. while I refresh my deck. Easy as you like. Easy peasy. And so, um, and so Milam is pretty good at killing Elizabeth, but what I will say is on average, it feels like you're going to do Milam once, right? And if you're as SDS, like you're playing into it, you can kind of like fit angle into it where you're like, okay, if the, the Milam is coming, right? And I don't need to mill, which like in the early game is not necessarily true. You don't have to mill. You can probably get away with just like the one or maybe two, and like making sure you have, you know, your Rize, or sorry, uh, the Ricos, and like, you know, you're just sculpting for it. You're just like preparing because, because it's a Muron list, right? Um, it's actually less deadly. Like if you're playing a Milam list where your goal is to loop Milam, say, right? And your goal is to just be like, I'm gonna play Milam and I'm gonna do it again and again and again until the end game. Then, okay, yeah, 
now that gets problematic for SCS because now your brainstorm will never live, right? If you do it once and then you transition to Miron, then like if their game's not going horribly, they're not gonna have to worry about it ever again. Yeah, and I think there's something to be thought about there. What I like about Milam is that when you, if the game is slightly unstable already, adding additional sculpts makes the game even more unstable. This is true. And while they do have a whole bunch of really solid hand fixes because of Cowgirl, because of Rico, things like this, they still don't have super great like waiting room, waiting room access. access. It's kind of, it's mid. Uh, yeah, the good point to note is uh, if you kill these Elizabeths, uh, their main salvage option is, is the, the brainstorm. This is true. Yeah. So like, okay, I see what you're saying, but like, if we're doing this, it's like, they're only okay. The only thing killing these Milums is probably either the stock bomb, or these lost things. Which, granted, they will probably have it. Yeah. But like, if you, if you, I feel. Granted, I haven't played the matchup that much, but in my mind, if you just meal them two turns in a row, they're like, fuck, I've got maybe one Elizabeth for the rest of the game yeah. until I draw the others. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, well, congratulations, now they're stuck on plus money. Yeah. No, I think that's valid. I think it's also true that Muron, as a, as a resource engine, is still valuable in those matchups, but as a board state engine, it's arguably not as necessary. Just because STS doesn't compete for the board very well. I mean, they'll clear you, like, yeah. often enough. They'll clear you and you'll clear them with Lost Vein, right? But the if they don't get a reset on the deck, then after you've cleared one round of Lost Veins... Oh, I mean, like, not even just Lost Vein, just, like, the like the Eska stock bomb, you know? Yeah, but a lot of that is prone to some high but that's not that's a trade you'll take right that leaves an open lane that basically is two damage yeah yeah for sure for sure so i think miron is actually not as needed against sds if you're playing Milam, because you become a different sort of deck in that in that game state like your your main thrust now is denial because miron doesn't become stock positive until you get two pants combos right so if i just deprioritize my pants combo a little bit and try to do two rounds of Milam. Like, two rounds of double Milam, we'll call it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Then, maybe that's better in those yeah. matchups. Yeah, maybe. Like, you replace them, I remove them, you replace them, and then I remove them again. The game starts to get really awkward if you have to keep using your sculpts in that way because they don't have a super lot of their other high-end uh, level, like, high-level pieces that they want to use to win the game. And... It, the deck is a little stock sensitive, if I'm being honest. So, having to use those sculpts on Elizabeth instead of using those sculpts on, say, Stock Swap, Fumio, Hendrickson's, whatever, um, I think that may be a source of tension. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's real. And not for nothing, if you look at your opponent's deck, just like whatever rogue deck it is, and you're like, huh, looks like you really like this back row. What if? you never had it again <laughs> you know because you know a lot of uh quote unquote like mid-tier like uh like mid-tier like upper mid-tier decks you know commonly brainstorm great mechanic we love brainstorming and so and for the most part those decks are not expecting to get shot in the face and die and uh for decks that aren't already not as good at kind of sculpting their hand together the things that they want then you kind of just, you know, super skill issued them to death. Because if you're playing Mila Muron, now you're like, your brainstorm's gone, there's a board of 12 fives, die, you know? So. Yeah, and I think another thing that's worth mentioning is that there's a number of other back row combo decks. I yeah. think the most salient of the Azer lane decks is a back row combo deck. That bounces to your hand, yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, you got to do it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the whole combo is bounce to your hand, get a stock. If you don't bounce, you don't get anything. Right, so it's like the pressure of missing. Uh, you can't... Oh, oh, like it's missing the like climax. not having yeah, yeah, yeah. the bar. Yeah, yeah, like not having the bar. True, Which, true. like, sure, the brainstorm to check three, but, like, there's been happen. a non-zero amount of games. Where it can't like, happen. It can't happen. Damn, I'm not I played this can't. bar two turns in a row, but this third turn, I didn't get it. Fuck. Look, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm with you. I understand. 
And also, not for nothing, people do still like the uh, Chainsaw Man Stock Soul combo. Yeah, yeah, that's another great example. And um, there, there, there is merit to be talking about eight pants hitting that level zero Rimuru. Yeah, yeah, could, no, the you level also zero could Rimuru. just hit the brainstormers before before Shuna. Before the Shuna hits the yeah, board. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, that doesn't work into standby slime, obviously, because they they get the Shuna and then you can't target the the back row anymore. And uh, I, I said eight pants, not standby. There's a reason I'm playing. Yeah, standby. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> in any case, um, yeah, they just won't get Shuna. It's, you know, it just won't won't happen. Won't happen. Um, but I think on average, yeah, like Milam Euron seems like a pretty reasonable take if you think that SDS is present. And lo and behold, we're going to the West Coast. So uh, let's talk about Hendrickson against some other decks. Um, sure. As a person who's played quite a bit of SDS, Billy, do you think that there are matchups for SDS that we haven't talked about that are annoying, challenging, difficult for various reasons, and... Do you think that it's worth considering those decks going into a, perhaps an SDS heavy meta? Um, I think Kaguya on the pure fact that they have a level zero stop. <laughs> and that's purely it. Because like, okay, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm, gonna peek the screen. I'm looking at the, 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 the script or whatever. And it's like how to beat Hendrickson. And I'm like, getting your ass stock swapped is number one <laughs> yeah if you get stock swapped as hendrickson at a bad time it's cooked it's like the the, the okay it's like if i can be honest like the, unless the, you're like going down to like one every time and making it a gamble yeah. and even then it's a gamble it's like the 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 be, like i feel like 80 percent of the games sds loses that isn't just down to like i opened utter dog shit and can't do anything 80 percent of the games they lose is because they fumbled the bag somewhere because like that deck requires like i f when i play it i feel like i do like a high lot of like i'm doing a, ho a lot of cycling like i'm brainstorming every turn and like cycling these cards and then resetting into a lost vein and so like when i was playing Escanor specifically it was like most of the games i felt that i lost was because i fucked up a sculpt somewhere and then it led me into a vulnerable game state where it's like whenever i'm playing that elizabeth combo right. half the cards in my hand aren't actually real cards there's some form of cycling like it's the lane brainstormer the cowgirl um maybe even climax swap or another elizabeth it's yeah, just sure, cycling sure. yeah yeah, yeah. i i do want to clarify for the listeners at home we do have a script but it's not like we're literally planning out every it's single just bullet word. points <laughs> yeah yeah we have like bullet points that we want to cover and we're just like yeah how do we beat hendrickson actually but I think, I mean, it's strong for a reason, right? Yeah. It's an advantage engine that doesn't necessarily care about their board state because, or like, because ideally they just want to go like stock soul combo every single turn with double Elizabeth in back row and d double brainstorm every turn and use the Elaine brainstorm on top of it to fix whatever else like deck milling you need and keep doing that and stock compressing until you die. Yeah, I will say that you're vulnerable to some strange chunks whenever you employ a strategy like this, particularly in the points of the game where you're not contesting the board. Right. Um, so opponent has very powerful level ones or opponent has very powerful level twos that wall you off, like Nino or Muron or uh, uh, soon to be Oshinoko. Soon, like, soon to be Kana. Right. Um, or or Memcho. 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 Oh, it's Memcho. Sorry. Yeah. Kana's the finisher. That's yeah. Right. So right. um, it's... Put, put some respect on my girl, Memcho. Okay, fuck you, Ben. I, I don't know anything about the show, and I never will. No, same. <laughs> <laughs> say, say, hard, hard same. Hard same. But um, because you have these type of wall-off decks, it's going to leave you with a lot of empty lanes, and empty lanes can yield some really high variance activity. So while should block is one of those things that we know, love, and definitely don't believe in, um, it, even if you should block, sometimes you'll take some weird chunks. So sometimes you die. Yeah, I think that's a risk of of playing SCS is 
uh, strange triggering into strange like big chunks right yeah, yeah that yeah. can accelerate the game in a very unproductive way very quickly yeah especially it, if you don't like you need to hedge against it as a hendrickson player like you need to be like keeping a hendrickson or two in hand early on because like that can happen to you and if you don't do that that's when you're like i'm at three zero and i have a cowgirl a rico and two elizabeths in my hand and a stock suit. now this would be an okay hand about one level ago <laughs> yeah exactly so i think that um yeah i think that's something you have to be aware of when you're playing the deck is that there is some there is some high variance activity that can go on and your main board contests are mostly bombs so when your main board contests are mostly bombs then you're gonna you're gonna open yourself up to that so it, that is one of the weaknesses of the deck in my opinion i think there's a uh, there's a good chunk of the good players the, the good players in I, I'm making air quotes. Wow. Um, They're just it, not good or no, 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 no. Just like, I think there's like a wisdom in the game about board contesting that it does, that it's not important or that it's, it doesn't matter. And as long as you can reach like certain resource break points or certain hand break points or certain deck break points, then it will just work TM. Right. Unless eight standby is meta. Weiss is not a board based game. Right. And so I don't I don't agree. Right. I think that every time you allow your opponent more resources than the game generally demands, which is I reduce your character stack by three and then you reduce my character stack by three and we push it back and forth during the game. That creates a demand for pluses because you uh, do not naturally plus hand. You, in fact, naturally minus hand if you lose your whole board every turn. So we get two guaranteed pluses a turn, which is by drawing and clocking. The other pluses have to come from the deck. You have to, it forces your opponent to use resources to gain more hand size. So every time you allow your opponent to relax and take turns off where they don't have to do anything, they just draw and then don't clock and then attack three times because the game state is normal. They have enough cards in hand. They have a they have what they need. And there's three lanes to hit in for two, two, two. You are giving your opponent edges they do not normally have, which will lead to gameplay patterns that normally they cannot take. Some finishers cannot be tripled, but I promise you, if you allow your opponent to have too much luxury in the game, they'll be able to. And so I yeah, shout out to everybody that's ever let me run triple Kawako on you. I appreciate you losing. Great stuff. Yeah, it's stuff like that where it's like, oh, this finisher costs eight kajillion stock if you need triple of them. But it turns out I have that because the game went slow and you never fought me for the board. So I never spent one stock the entire game. So I think that is a it is a, something worth mentioning about Hendrickson is that if they don't contest you on the board, a lot of times you can take the game at a much different pace than they take it. And you're pushing a lot of the actions and uh, and and with that, a lot of the brain power of the matchup, like who's got to think the most about the game to them, not to you. And so that's, that's a real cost of playing that deck. It's the primary reason why it doesn't, I don't think it dominates is because one, you're trying to win with math and math, and that's that's a cursed strategy in Y Schwartz. <laughs> but the other thing is that math is just fake. <laughs> it's more like decompression is a gamble. Yeah, yeah. It's a calculated yeah. one. Yeah. But it's a gamble. Yeah. Why Weiss is a game of ranges, honestly. It really is. It really is. But I think that it's real to acknowledge the opportunity costs that that you take on when you are playing a deck that doesn't really fight for the field. It's very easy for slime decks to go Miron, Miron, Miron combo. And then if you don't do anything about it, they'll be like, did I get pants combo? Did I not get pants? Try to get it combo. And they'll just keep jamming that on you until you make the game state different than it is. Or they don't even get the combo, but you have two Miron. Right. Or, so the, or the board's yeah. full already. And you're just like, okay, hit, 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 push you to three yeah, or yeah. whatever. Sure. Sure. So that is worth thinking about if you're playing those type of decks is that you're taking on the mental load of the game one way or the other yeah yeah i think it's like what i said earlier where like yeah the best way to beat hendrickson is to make them fumble the bag is like it's you have to put so much strain and hopefully you uh you don't fit the, bite them when they're uh, perfectly mentally refreshed or anything <laughs> <laughs> true buy cards uh massive buff into hendrickson players like, like the, honest <laughs> the honest answer is probably like 
you probably just have to to force them to fumble for more cards and so like that's why like the milam is good uh grappling hook was good get out those elizabeths and like you know level zero stock swap is good <laughs> true you you just have to like i don't know how you would but like the answer is you have to make them fumble more yeah so uh what do we what do we think about so it's gonna be 20 percent of the field at every tournament for the remainder of the life of weiss schwartz i don't know how else to explain it it's just something we have to accept as players of the game yeah Let's talk about Hall of Life for Ninja. a quarter of a second. What? Huh? Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk so about Hall of Life for a quarter of a second. <laughs> no, no, no. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you next mean? Year, yeah. By next year's time, all the Hall of Life players, including maybe myself, no, 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 really, uh, will have emigrated to their new ho new Hall of Life only game. <laughs> Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine thinking these people were reasonable and wouldn't play both. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about Hall Life for a second because let's it's, talk about Hall Life. It's going to be at every. It's, it's going to be, be a big chunk racial? of every event. A big chunk. It's honestly really refreshing uh, to like know that so many people will just play Hall Life because it means that they won't be playing Slime, they won't be playing Overlord, they won't be playing Hendrickson. And they'll be playing Hollow Life, which is good. Good, you know we love Maureen, we love Stock Swap, you know, Kiara combo, great. Chloe combo, also a great time. Very bog standard kind of like play patterns. I think that what makes Hollow Life great is that they have a really, really reasonable cheap finisher that will output six packets. And so they can dedicate the remainder. Also, it's really self-fixing in a in a way that I just can't express enough that there's almost no way you can't pull this thing off. But what that means is that they can take the rest of their resources, all of them, and dump them into making your life miserable at the other breakpoints of the game. And you know what? At this point, um, because we now have the summer collection with the burn one, like early play, is that... Is that enough pushing? Like, like because now you can you can dump resources even at the end game, right? Like leading up to Maureen, you can dump extra stock not just into stock swap, not into perhaps like shuffle back, which can be kind of like a mixed bag depending on deck state. If you have like eight stock, you're like burn one twice and then triple Maureen. Yeah. Um. I was when when the uh, ambassador set came out. I was looking at the Kiara Marine combo, uh, and uh, I'll be real. I didn't look the summer collection. Those cards are fucking nice, but uh, yeah, we love a hexproof early play healer. Yeah, but, hexproof four more early play healer, cross turn. Yeah, but I was I was I was looking at the Kiara combo, and yeah. it's very simple. It's on attack, pitch one, check four, add any two, and it's on choice. And guess what? We only need four stock for Marine. So I was, like Steve said, I was looking at every card that was currently out, so not counting Summer Collection, and trying to put every card that said, fuck with my opponent. <laughs> I played one, I played, like, at one point I was playing, like, two Anya, uh... Two Anya, one IMA, a card Titan, two stock swaps, yeah. and, a, and a Watame early play just for the fuck of it. Yeah, fuck and these then, guys. And then, like, two, two Shions to shuffle back cards, because I'm like, when I was playing the Kiara combo, I'm like, damn, I have, like, eight stock and, like, 15 hand. I only need, like, a quarter of this shit to do a Marine. What am I doing with the rest of this shit? I guess we'll try to fuck with my opponent. Yeah. And, you know, it, it worked pretty well. I didn't look at Summer Collection, but now it looks pretty nice. Yeah, now we have more fuckery. We have Burn 1. Early play 4, more Burn 1. Yeah, and, and not just that, but um, we have Burn 1 and we have Heal 1 with Hexproof. And so Hexproof in this context basically means we have another way to dodge anti-early counters and deal damage for joy. But we also, in specific matchups, at specific end games, we can dodge defensive counterplay. So it's a front that we can take if our opponent is near dead. It's a front we can take in place of a Marine that they can't tap counter. 
And so that will allow can't you to tap, can't plus, can't minus, soul, can't, right. can't, can't. Right, exactly. All right. And so that's great. And it's it's also, these cards are on the colors that you want them to be on. Yeah, yeah. Which like, is a really important idea. The burn one is AKA a red card. not green. The, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, that's the thing is that if the healer was on green, it would just be like, well, I... Uh, I I don't. It's I'm, yellow. Yeah, but it's it's yellow, and the burns and the burns on red. Yeah. So these are the these are already the colors that you were playing anyway. So it's great that you can lean in. I will say, there's a few good hall live decks that are just head and shoulders above the others. But in a meta where I think there's going to be a whole lot of level twos kicking around, that are like mid, like pretty strong power, but not ridiculously overwhelming. I mean, we still got we still got Katamarine, right? Yeah. Like old faithful will still get the job done. <laughs> People are signing play- level twos is the thing Kanada does best. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh people are trying out, you know, Mume Kanada. People are trying out Mume Rushia. This is gonna hurt every Mume fan's feelings, but <laughs> The, those cards feel fake as fuck. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. They do. My next mission is now to move all over Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you you can early play the set one Aqua Finisher now too. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I it's pretty funny. I I was I was playing with somebody on the sim that was jamming it, and I was like. All right. So yeah, that's a stock shuffle at level two, which can be kind of problematic if uh, if you do it right, but also really cheap uh, from a resource perspective to, yeah, to yeah. make the change happen. Uh-huh. So I will, whatever my next waifu opportunity is, I'll pay tribute to our gamer Onion Maid uh, by I'll, I'll play put to put together the Aqua all Aqua deck. That would be that would be nice. Probably like Shion Aqua. There's not. It's it, the the Aqua changes on the same combo as like on, set on one. that tangential note. R.I.P. to our resident old man losing two Oshis within the span of a month. We will miss you, Ame. Yeah, Steve unfortunate. Has shed three tears. <laughs> yeah, that's really unfortunate, you guys. Um, you guys that like watch uh, Hollow Life V tours and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm really <laughs> sad for you guys. Thanks. That's really unfortunate. So let's round out the rest of the top of the meta. Um, we have our we have several flavors of Hollow Live. We have SDS. We have Slime. There will always be at least two, one Overlord player, a ma- two really a master and an apprentice. But, um, <laughs> only two there will ever be. <laughs> only two will there ever be. <laughs> yeah. But these are is one. Yeah. Like, these are super dangerous decks. What era are we in? Is one of them Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> yeah. One of them has to be like. One like, of them's gotta we, be old. Are we, Palpate- are we like Palpatine era yet? Are we yeah. old school? Yeah, like- it may just be Palpatine. It may just be Palpatine and Vader. But what we will say is, it's a deck that will never be bandwagon. It's a deck that will never be fully embraced because it's too fucking hard to play. But it's a deck that we have to talk about because until and I don't think it'll ever be restricted because of this. It. It's super dangerous to run into with the wrong deck. I'll say. Yeah, absolutely. Either in the near future or the far future where Slime is banned and Hendrickson doesn't exist. Somehow, Overlord, like uh, Palpatine, came back. (laughs) Somehow, (laughs) Overlord came back. (laughs) Yeah. It's because, and I firmly believe this with all of my being. They won't restrict it. It's because we're too... They won't restrict it. Japan was too reasonable. That, uh-huh. That's the that's the moral of the story. Uh huh. Is that that combo worked like gangbusters in Japan because in Japan players are reasonable. We're right. not. We're right. not. Re- we're not reasonable. We're not reasonable. Actually, the funny part is it does mean that the Freeran designed like nerf card will actually work. Yeah, that will be the actual thing that kills slime. By the way, is that set will be popular because Freeran. Right. Let's don't confuse ourselves. But um, because Freeran. You can no longer, it is now feels unreasonable possibly to take the risk of, yeah, I'm just gonna discard all your markers and you lose the game. Okay, your turn. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on. I think it's. I think it's literally like a drop search or drop salvage. It's like a useful utility card, and then it specifically fucks Overlord in particular. Great stuff all the way around. Uh, but yeah. And so. So what else are we? What else are we scared of? What else are we scared of? Scared of. I mean. You know, I will always be scared to a little bit, a little bit uh -huh. of eight door quints. Yeah, eight door quints can can always scam a game. It's got it's got the reach. Yeah, and also um, it can fight for the board uh, in particular. Very reasonably, in particular yeah. ways, Absolutely. like very good against, uh, very reasonable in the slime. You can basically pay two stock to remove two murons in a pretty straightforward way. Um, that that is hard to respond to without you without them using resources and honestly anytime you can make a a, a slime deck crack counters before a three feels pretty pretty sick so it, I yeah I mean it it's self setting the the finisher is reasonable yeah I I think a door quint is is one of those decks that it because of the nature of the way the meta is now it can it can definitely has room to operate. Yeah, for sure. Um, we've already talked about Oshinoko. Uh, we love choice into choice into choice. Great stuff. Can uh, we talk about Denkeki? Is it out for it'll SAC? Be out, it'll be out after SAC. It'll be out after SAC. We got to save our content, Billy. Okay, fair. We got to we got to save our content for other days. Because you know, yeah, because Papa Bushi doesn't give us content every day. We have we gotta, to. We gotta pace ourselves. That's right. We can't just speed run the content. <laughs> that's why we're not. We can only speed run Miron to the trash. That's all we can do. <laughs> that's why we're not gonna talk about Macross until it releases. But yeah, when Macross releases, I might play that. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like the most fun deck ever to go X and two with. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, if you go to a big enough tournament, X and two, that's like top thirty-two. We do get that. Uh, what is it? Do we? Don't we have that? Uh, weighted the scarcity weight, weight or whatever. What? Was that not a thing where it's like if you play less sets, your your weight, or if you play a less popular set, your your. That's your a Japan. That's a Japan only. That's a Japan only okay. mechanic. Yeah. Look, I'll yeah. be honest. I, I just I don't pay attention if it's. Yeah, a yeah. That's that's a JP only mechanic where they're like, hey, did you get a pretty good record with a less popular set? Oh yeah, yeah diversity cut. Diversity cut. Was, there we yeah. go. That's yeah. the term. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't have that here. What an absolutely toxic mechanic. Please never do it. <laughs> I'm asking you kindly as a meta slave. Please do not introduce random shit to my top uh, eight. The game's hard enough. Uh, Please. Uh, I'm begging you. <laughs> all right. And so uh, it has now been, what is it? It's now been approximately 77 minutes and 20 seconds. And so let's talk about what deck I'm playing to Sacramento. It's... Review Starlight. Wow. Oh Amazing. my god. Who could have predicted it? Whoa. The crowd is so surprised. And everybody that dropped out at 10 minutes into this podcast has no clue. They're going to get scammed for sure. It's hilarious. But of course, the deck that you've decided to pilot is your maximum rarity deck, right? That you spent thousands of dollars on and acquired perhaps the only max rarity review starlight deck in that configuration that exists in all of english y schwartz right right ben that's the one right wait steve are you talking about the deck where uh ben was like man i really want to try out another early play healer let me buy this early play sp so i can test this and that, then that's it that's yeah it. and then screwdriver the 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 box open because the only copy that could be acquired was a graded copy that's of course the deck we're talking about right ben right ben <laughs> god damn it ben <laughs> <laughs> you know i think i mentioned uh in the last episode that it was my personal opinion that that deck is not as good in the meta as the deck that we discussed in that episode you did you did and we are in the spike corner yeah where we like to discuss decks that we would like to engineer to win yeah and thus i i do think i will be playing eight choice review starlight to sacramento uh i think we did talk a little bit about the eight choice review starlight deck in the sense that 
uh, we kind of know how some of the parts behave. Yep. But I think I tend to agree. I've faced... A, I, I am the foremost expert on how to fight Revy Starlight. If anybody is like interested <laughs> in it, it's, it's the useless information I can't get out. Yeah, it's like the yeah, opposite yeah. of being good against slime. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, yeah, this deck is one of those resource breakpoint decks where if the game goes really poorly, then it feels very difficult. But when the game goes normal, you just die. You just die because their finisher is a lot of small packets followed by a lot of big packets. And so if the lot of small packets does anything, then the lot of big packets will absolutely kill you. And then of course, if you don't block the small packets, then you kind of just die to the small packets. So pretty good, pretty good stuff. I, you know, I've relished watching or, or like feeling like the hope in my opponents just drain into the dumpster as they're at like three something and they're just dying in the climax phase. It's been a great time. Honestly. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, <laughs> it's one of I don't think, cause I, I haven't been able to play against Billy that much. So you haven't like really seen it that much uh or, or we've we done a lot of sim games ben we have done we've a lot, done of, a sim lot games. of sim actually, games actually no that's true we did but it's like like you can kind of see it happen too where you're like you know i don't think they went they have, i don't think they have that many climaxes left in the deck and you know they're at like three two and i mean that's that's enough <laughs> yeah i mean i don't think that's much of a flex like it's not a flex. A lot of it's just funny. <laughs> a lot of decks went at three two. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it it's like the funny part. Is, sure, the pre-attack like death. It's yeah. like the pre-attack death. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, where you're just like, see ya. If if you don't know what this does, right? Yeah. And you're like playing something with counterplay. Sure. And you're like, all right, you know, it's been a pretty rough game, but yeah, and, you know, we're at like three one, and it feels a little rough, but. At least I have like, you know, money counter plus six souls counter. It's going to go great. I'm like one, two, one, two, you're dead. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, sadly for those of you in the Northern California area, you're not going to have one damn clue about what that deck does. And that's just how it is. No, no, no. They'll, they'll know. Yeah. What, they're, yeah. Yeah. At least one of them guaranteed is a real one. He did comment on the last episode. Sure, but are they going to look at the deck? Are they going to look at those cards? Really? Yeah, yeah. surely they wouldn't send me to level three first I want a with running stock counter. compression. <laughs> I, when you go to Sacramento, I want a running counter of the amount of people who go, when you go tap two, one, pick up the three cards. No, I'm not even playing deck. it. What the fuck are you even doing here, Ben? Because if if I burn one, burn two, burn one, burn two, then their original top three cards did not matter anymore. But you could see three climaxes and then stock swap them. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out to the doctor who had that happen to him and it even hit a fourth one. Eight stock. It wasn't even that much stock. <laughs> yeah. Genba! <laughs> There's nothing better than playing the game correctly and then losing because of it. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Great stuff. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, I'll report back when I, you know, bust her out at like X in five or whatever. And, you know, we'll be like, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. So... Then Duluth. <laughs> <laughs> but if my goal is to make Top Cut, I think it's possible to make Top Cut uh, because it's like a fairly large tournament. Uh, and so like, there's just like, by by the nature of it, there's just like a more spread of decks. Like 20% of Hollow Live goes to like, you know, 30 or 40 people at the whole event are like slinging VTubers around which I'm completely fine with, <laughs> you know? It's just like, you know, yeah, you go and don't do anything that I care about, like in particular, great times. I will say uh, sometimes uh, if you, it's important to acknowledge that like 
being able to force yourself to gain levels at the right time is a big part of what makes some competitive decks better than others. True. And kind of one of the closet weaknesses for for SDS is that that while they can do it, it's a really awkward card. Yeah, it's a spawn Ricky. It's a spawn Ricky, and you don't have that. You definitely aren't running four of it. <laughs> yeah, probably not. So and one of them is definitely getting level. Yeah, 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 like we don't exactly, have that many good blue yeah. fixes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it can be complicated for them to level up. So if they have a long way to go in terms of like deck remaining, you might be able to. I think they're they're at risk of getting stranded in specific matchups. Yeah, I I do think that it is funny though that not for nothing. I have seen people just look at their hand, look at their compression, look at me. They go clock, refresh the whole deck. Do it again. All right, great. Now I'm level three. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I've definitely cool. done that as an Escanor player. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely looked at my opponent being like, damn, I really could Escanor you right now. I have this choice. Let me just brainstorm a couple times and see what happens. <laughs> just see what happens. Yeah. Mill the entire deck. That's what happens. Do it twice. Hit yourself twice by virtue of milling. All right, we did it. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, and so, if you want to come say hi, I'll be there. And if you see somebody playing Revue Starlight, then odds are it's me or the guy that plays uh, Choice Pants in that region. There is that guy as well. I would, I okay, for all this talk, Okay, just like for the pure hubris of it, of what's happened, especially because I haven't been able to play as much recently, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm gonna rock up this tournament. I'm gonna be like, I'm feeling good. Let's hit him with the fucking eight choice review. And then we're gonna fucking bust her out in like round six or whatever, you know, like X3 round six or whatever. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. And I look at the top eight later and the choice pants guy is just top eight right there, right again. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I almost guarantee you, I almost guarantee you, like, you know, that might happen. <laughs> but that's our show for today. So thank you, Billy, for stopping by, hanging out, sharing your opinions, talking shop. You have anything else you'd like to say to the audience? No. Hello. Goodbye. And tune in next time after your next deck out. And don't you forget to take the refresh button.